Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about this video by Warren Buffett. Check it out. 90% of the people that buy stocks don't think of them the right way. They think about something that they hope goes up next week. <laughs> and they think about the market as something they hope goes up. And if it's down, they feel worse. I and, feel better. And you think about? I think about what the company's going to be worth 10 or 20 years from now. And I hope it goes down when I buy it because I'll buy more. All right, Kirby. This is one that is so hard to explain and stress to people, I feel, because they want that quick flip so bad. And I know from experience, I've tried to tell people that when I buy stocks, I am buying them on a long-term basis. I'm not buying them hoping that they'll go up tomorrow, next week, or whatever. And if they go down, that I'm not even worried that... I want them to go down so I can buy more shares. Same thing Warren said. And it seems like it's one that is so hard for people to grasp. And they're always calling me or texting me when the stock is going down. They're scared. And then they're asking what stock that they can get into that they can see 100% return less than a year. And it's just not the case. So what are your thoughts on what Warren said, though? Well, too, the first thing that you said, uh, I'll get back to one in a second, is if if it was that easy to know a stock that's going to return 100% in a year, then everybody be a fortune teller. And why the hell, if I knew that information, why the hell would I tell you? That's first. But that's how people think it is. Everybody think investing is like a lottery ticket. Everybody's just waiting for the numbers to come out on a Wednesday or Friday to see if they number hit. Everybody thinking everything is a flip. Investing is a long-term aspect. But the thing is, is about this channel. I've this channel, we have not created nothing new. New as in being, we're not seeing something that has not already been said in the financial landscape. We don't create a new blueprint that we want people to follow only thing we do is what's tried and true that's been over the history of mankind when it comes to investing i mean even if you go back to the book of richest man in babylon that was a bc book that was the before common era uh it's just kind of, the concept is the same but even in the book rich uh richest man in babylon it was always you are in a long-term agenda. The long-term agenda is to create wealth. It's not the short-term mindset, the microwave mindset that people have today. And people probably had to the end of time. That's why it's still as it is today, as it was, you know, a hundred years ago. So few have the wealth and the majority have nothing. Because everybody's in that microwave mindset. Before microwaves even invented, people still wanted instant gratification. Uh, and then the people who thought long-term was the ones that benefited. Like, the mantras that Warren Buffett said in his video is, my mantras all day. I'm the guy that's always beating the table hoping for a recession. I'm the guy that's always hoping I buy a stock and it goes down. I mean, of course, you know, people in the classes and things like that, they are frustrated with me because I said, like, when the market is going up, I rarely talk in the class. When the market is going down, I'm celebrating this party. I got words to say every five minutes when the market is going down. Because the opportunity to invest or the money is not made on the sale of a stock, the sale of an investment. It's on the buy. So I will just give you two instances. Like, uh, a property that I bought up north. I bought it on the buy for $175,000. That's where the money was made at when I bought it for $175,000. Now it's worth a million. But if I bought would have bought it for $999,000, it's worth a million now. Did I make any money? No. The money was made because I had the aptitude to buy something of value at a depressed price at 175 and then over the long term it grew to a million that's the same thing with stocks i don't care if the stock market don't go up for the next 10 years i don't care 20 years 30 years 
I just want to buy companies that, according to their balance sheet, I don't care what the stock do. According to their balance sheet, they're increasing revenue, they're increasing profit, they're growing their subscriber base, they're growing their matrix to uh, saturate more of the market. That's what I care about. I will invest in it and I will keep buying it and keep buying it. If it goes lower, I will keep buying it because I'm buying a better company at a cheaper price. But everybody's always in the in a rush to, hey, I want to buy it tomorrow and be a millionaire by next week. And that's why most people fail in the stock market because they don't have the patience. Me, I'm I'm a very much, I very much enjoy seeing red in the market. That is the only time I buy in the market is when the stocks are red. I do not buy when on a green day. I refuse to. Yeah, absolutely. I agree too. And, you know, the only thing I would say, and maybe I'm okay with putting money into if it's green, is just the S&P 500. And that is just something I learned from you where, like, don't try to time the market in itself. You know, just mm -hmm. keep putting money into it and you'll see growth from it. But that's because we historically have seen proof of that from the S&P 500. But as far as individual stocks, I mean, I'm always looking for an opportunity and always, you know, if if there are no stocks that I see actively going down that are good company stocks, I'll just pile cash until that there until there is an opportunity. But if I see that there is a stock, like let's say there's, um, I do this with my Roth IRA where I will put money into a stock currently. What I'm doing right now is put money into stocks. Let's say I started with Meta. It was Meta and Amazon, which were the two that I saw that were depressed stocks. And I was putting money into those. They have since come up. And then I started moving my focus towards say SoFi and um, Disney, but these are in a retirement portfolio. So I know that I'm not going to be able to even see returns from this until 35 years from now. So that's why I'm selecting these depressed stocks so that I can accumulate the shares while they are down and then, you know, see the returns in the future. But that's on a 35 year vision or more. I mean, I may not even cash out at the retirement age. I may keep buying, but um, that is my viewpoint when buying stocks. And the same thing goes towards, you know, just the regular account that I use. Um, I invest in the S and P 500 and then I'll find stocks that are, you know, depressed as well and put money into those. And, and people don't get confused. I mean, when he call out the stock symbols and you probably look them up, he's not saying depressed because the stock price is so low. I mean, Disney, I believe, is like 110, 111 at the time of the recording of this video. So far, is at a lower price in the single digit range. He's not buying them because they're in the, the number, the sticker price of the stock. Right. He's buying it because of the underlining fundamentals of the company. He's actually looking at financial statements. He's actually looking at cash flow statements. He's actually looking at what the company is doing on a profitability or beta matrix. That is what he's looking at. The stock price don't matter. You want to see a company diving deep in there because, of course, nobody want to do no work these days. But diving deep in there and looking at the financial statements, which is readily available to the public on different websites, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, uh, MSN Money. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but you can find the financials of every company. He's looking at a company that is growing revenue, that is growing profitability, that is growing subscribers. That is what you want in a company that is eliminating debt or lowering debt or debt obligation. That is what you're looking for. When the rest of the world realize the company that you have, the key of it is you want to accumulate as many shares as possible at the lowest price points as possible, even though you know that the company itself is growing, 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 you want to buy as many shares as possible before the rest of the world recognize what's going on. Once the rest of the world recognize what's going on, they are the ones that's going to send the stock price higher. It's not you. 
That's what Warren Buffett does all the time. He gets at a company as attractive prices nobody's paying attention to. He gets as many shares as possible. And then once the rest of the world realizes that that company is, as these new kids say today, he is him, you know, then everybody else buy it. And then the stock price go off, but you already in it. And that's how the money is made. So stop looking for the quick flip. Because the quick flip is just going to put you in pain with the IRS. I mean, not to switch investment vehicles, but Alex, I don't know how many people you talk to that's flippers, but everybody I know personally that I know that is a flipper, they have problems with the IRS because they don't sit, sit aside money for, you know, capital gains tax and the rest, what have you. But the people that's long-term, their tax obligation is lower. They don't have problems with uh, the IRS. They find ways to write off stuff. But the people that's looking for a quick buck, they're always a problem with the government. And the problem with being in, in trouble with the government, you can't file bankruptcy on debt to the government. So Warren Buffett, you're a gentleman, a scholar. Um, I hope you got another 100 years left in you. But you gave the blueprint. People just choose not to listen. That being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, leave us a comment down below, and we'll see you guys in the next one.